Hello and welcome back to OmniFoot TV. This is Joe Stormer speaking. And today's video is going to be about a couple of things. And I'm going to start off with Wrexham. Now, I wanted to talk about Wrexham's rise to League Two. And more importantly, in a sense, their rise to this level of fame and publicity, this organic growth that they have been able to achieve thanks to how well their co-owners have just expressed and shared their journey into becoming football fans. This is honestly one of the most organic things I've seen in a very long time. And I use that word in particular because it's honest. It's genuine. And you can tell that they may not have really understood the sport much, but they wanted to get into it. When they bought the club, they wanted to understand what made people tick. And the more you'd follow them, the more things you'd see, the more reels, the highlights, the reactions that you'd see come from them when they were at games especially, it, it, it warms my heart as a football fan, you know, to watch them now express so much love for the game. And the fact that Wrexham are now touring in North America because their owners are, you know, partly... Uh, I'm not sure if Rob McElhenney is American or if he's Canadian like Ryan Reynolds. So I'll just plead ignorance on that. But you get the gist. The fact that they're able to tour here in this region and be recognized is so good for a League Two side. I, I don't think I've seen many teams from League 1 or 2 play preseason friendlies outside of, you know, Europe or England in particular. So this is just, it's, it's such a wonderful thing. It's good for the club in terms of finances because I'm sure they draw in more money. They gain a wider fan base. It, it helps them build onto their goals of actually reaching the Premier League, which I think that's exactly what they want to do. And you can imagine how happy or how much of an amazing story this would be. How happy they would be if they could do that within the next couple of seasons. I'm all for it if they do manage to. I mean, I remember when Southampton made their way to the Premier League. Apparently, I, 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 from, from what I can recall, they got promoted from League One to the Championship to the Premier League in three consecutive seasons. So, I think it, it could... It could go that way. You know, it could. Now, don't quote me on that in terms of, you know, me telling you that it will. It's not an absolute, but I would like to see it happen. And just to correct myself, I can't remember if it were, if it was the Saints who made it from League 2 to 1 and then the championship to the Premier League in four consecutive seasons. Because I remember something of that nature and it was really, you know, it, it left an imprint on me at the time when they made it to the Premier League. It was very good to see to see them do what they did. So I can only hope that something like that is on the cards for Wrexham. Now, this is a Welsh club, by the way. It's not English, if you guys can't tell, because I should have made that obvious or highlighted that fact in the beginning of the video, but you know, the excitement has been overtaking me for a couple of days now. For a Welsh club in League Two, newly promoted to amass such a fan base, based on how well the club seems to be run to this point in time is a massive massive achievement and it's a story football loves these are the stories that are good for football these are the things that make us fall in love with our sport even more this is what i love about our game the organic nature of things when people really run their clubs properly and when they build upon the the passion and the togetherness. And people may think this is, this is a bit of a cliche, but it's not. When they build on the traditional values that have allowed the sport to reach the heights that it has, that have allowed these brilliant teams to win the trophies that they have, be they our clubs or others across Europe or South America, North America, Africa, where else you'd like to think of, what have you. It helps us move forward. You know, money is obviously eating up our game, but it you, you get stories like this in the same frame, on the same spectrum, if you will. And I think it's the best thing ever, seriously. And I look forward to seeing how well they're gonna be able to do next season. And hopefully they'll make quite the mark on League Two. And become a you know one of the Welsh clubs with the higher pre with the higher presence 
in the top tier of English football. Now, I'll move on from this point to go into just a bit of a tangent because something came to my attention earlier today. Romelu Lukaku, this human being who I've covered in two previous videos, Juventus has pulled out of the deal to try and sign him, yeah? Fans apparently protested and said they didn't want him, which is good. Inter have pulled out. He's tried to contact them in order to get them to reopen negotiations with Chelsea. Chelsea don't want him. And apparently, Al Hilal have pulled out of trying to sign him. This human being is now officially in no man's land. Lukaku is officially in no man's land. And this is honestly, without a shadow of a doubt, of fruits of his labor. This is the, this is the fruits of his labor. This is of his own making. This is the result of the actions that he has done. This is the result of his decision making, of his horrible decision making. And he should have known that he, had, he, will, he would have had to bear the weight of such a thing. Apparently, he went on social media, he went on Instagram, and said, when the hate, he posted something on a story that, that read, when the hate doesn't work, they start spreading lies. Something of that nature. Man, you are delusional. Seriously. I'm actually starting to think Chelsea might offload him to Strasbourg. That's, how, that, that's the solution I'd want. Look, we don't want you. You're going to see off the rest of your contract in France. It would be brilliant. You get to knock off a couple of inches of his pride. That's a real kick in the head. One that he genuinely deserves. Figuratively. Not physically. You get, you get the point. I'm not inciting violence on the channel. Anyways. Apart from this tangent... Going back to a topic I covered yesterday in the reel. Messi. Messi, 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 Messi. I'll tell you one thing. If that 94th minute free kick was scored by a young talent making his way up via Inter Miami to win them their first League Cup game since May, it would have gotten some respectable exposure and then we have Messi doing the deed presenting us with more of the same magic that made us all fall in love with him as a player it's profound it really is what he does seems to transcend everywhere he goes what he gives us the way he provides it, the way he carries himself. He was subbed on, given the captain's armband, and given the freedom to play the way he plays, which is what any sane human being would think to do when they have Messi on their team, right? And then they get that free kick. It feels like we're heading towards a storybook ending. And this is the beginning of the end, as of now. The last chapter of Messi's career. The book is finally being drawn to a close. One day, when his time comes and when he hangs up his boots, I think we won't even know the impact of such a moment until years after. And I say this because it was, it, it's not necessarily because of a player that has come and gone for me, but the overall understanding of how the game changes when high profile figures who have changed the, sh the, the way football has been played or approached in general, walk away from the game, even if they are rivals. And I've, I've said this before in one of my videos, because as a Chelsea fan, we had a rivalry with Man United for years, right? The Jose Sir Alex years. 
in particular. I've used that word three times today. Anyways, when Sir Alex retired, obviously he's not a player, but he's a highly influential manager. At first, I was quite happy about it. Yay, we got him out of the way. But years on, I realized just how much healthier the game was when he was around. Now, I'm pretty sure our outlook on Messi is going to be very different. Obviously, it's gonna, we're going to be able to relate to that level of health in regards to the game. But I'm sure that in terms of his direct effect, we're going to have a lot more to say. A lot more to say. And this free kick to me, it may be his first goal at Inter Miami, but it could actually be a major highlight of his career simply because of the magnitude that comes with it, of the effect it will have on football in North America. For such an impact to already be felt from the first couple of days of his presence here, you know that it's only going to get bigger, badder, and much more interesting. So cheers to a wonderful career, and here's hoping he can cap it off with a couple of more trophies. And that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you uh, follow the channel for a while if you're watching right now. If, if you're not, just subscribe to the channel and click that bell notifications button because we post con content on a daily basis. If you liked the video, please just press the like button. And if you have anything to say, if you agree with any of the points I've made on any of the topics I've talked about, if you disagree as well, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're ready to have a healthy conversation about it, the comments section below is where it's at. Thank you once again for watching, and I will see you next time the whistle blows.